Hi, this is a small tutorial about how to set up a time management spreadsheet in Excel. I looked around YouTube and saw a number of examples, but they all were set up in such a way that across your spreadsheet you would have your days Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday like that, and down the left hand side you would have every hour of the working day. Um, and I didn't like that partly because I am a freelance person at the moment. I used to have a job and lost it a couple couple months ago so now I'm in the process of doing a job search and I'm also working on um, uh, a teaching business of my own and I'm taking on various editorial and other types of jobs from other people so I'm kind of in this sort of freelance situation where I have to keep track of a lot of different jobs and it occurred to me that if I use the method that was in some of the tutorials that are already on YouTube where you have that one day that it would be difficult to kind of figure out how much time I'm spending on a particular job so I wanted to set this up in such a way that I could not only take a look at the paid work that I was doing but also the volunteer work I'm doing in some personal projects that I also like to take time for on a daily basis see how much money I'm making and how close I'm getting to replacing the income that I used to have and also whether or not I'm leaving time enough in the day to um, goof off basically um, to do the kinds of other things that are non-work related that that I need to do so I decided to set up a spreadsheet that has a summary page at the front of it and then it has tabs and each tab you can see them down here <clears throat> they correspond to all of the things that you see in the list up here so it has all of the jobs that I want to do all the volunteer activities and then all the personal things that I want to keep track of on each of these individual tabs and what you're seeing here in the paid work section the paid work section has the various jobs that I've been doing I've only been keeping this information since May so for instance the job search hours that are over here are not quite so large and mainly because I did a lot of work on job searching in April and I'm about to start up another big push this week coming <clears throat> so the ebb and flow of how these things kind of fit into my everyday is is kind of visible here for me so I have the description and this took a little while to set up the summary sheet I have the description under paid work I have the segment for paid work I have a place with the hours for each of these jobs a place for payments I've received and then here are the average amount of money that I receive per hour for that particular job and these divide by zero ones are jobs that I've gotten the assignment but I haven't actually started putting in a whole lot of time yet or I haven't received a payment as yet and then in pro bono I'm only keeping track of a description of what it is my volunteer work and the hours I spend and in personal it's the same way just a description <clears throat> of what the the particular thing is and the hours I'm spending on it and then along the bottom these things all add up so for instance I have um, I have here a formula here's the formula spot up here and the formula down here for this total is sum of B4 to B19. So this is column B, and this is row 4. So that's the very first one. And then it goes down to 19, which is about in here. So it's adding up all of these hour values from B4 to B19. I'm mainly putting in my hours in terms of... Um, uh, of the percentage of, of 60 minutes that I'm completing and when I'm working on something in particular that I can figure out what's happening I have a tendency to try and work to the quarter hour because it's just easier to handle in some cases like this one I'm going to show you in more detail in a minute I'm actually putting in the the time that I'm spending and so you can see that it, it it comes up just a slightly different amount so this is basically hour and then percentage of the hour not minutes so um, for instance 5.75 is five and three quarters of an hour and then I've got the payment amounts and the average now these guys are coming from the tabs and you'll see that what you've got here is you've got the tab name and then you've got an exclamation point and then you have the column and row reference inside of that tab where this number came from so we're going to go over to Azire courses those are my own teaching projects and I'll show you 
So these are, this is some um, teaching that I'm doing on the Wib Wiz IQ social media and webinar system. <clears throat> and I've set up the billable uh, uh, small tab sheets with date, job, start, end, and then the total, which I put in manually by taking a look at what's in the start and end lines. And then I have the billable rate, if any, and I've got the payments logged, and then I have the average per hour. So right here we have the total hours, and we have the billable rate, and we have the average per hour. Now this is because I, I set up this course, and I'm charging my students a dollar for the course. And more recently, I started to charge $5, because I'm going to make this a year-long kind of continuing um, course that people can check in and out of as the year goes on. Um, so that's why it's such a small amount, because I'm, I'm still learning how to manage the system, and how to interact it with Moodle, and how to, which is my learning classroom management system system and how to do various things so I'm not charging them what it will ultimately uh, cost when I feel like I really have it all together so anyhow here we have E10 that's the total number of hours go back to the summary guy and you'll see that there's E10 desire courses exclamation point E10 the payment is from F10 and the average per hour from G10 and then I can add all these things up down at the bottom and get and in this case I get the overall average per hour from um, taking uh, C22 which is this line the amount of money that I've been paid and dividing it by B22 which is the total of hours that I've worked now the other thing that this is really good for is that it showed me that this job that I had very early on um, what which was a piecemeal job I got paid per text lesson that I wrote I also kept track of how many hours it took me to complete a text lesson that was accepted and then I was paid a hundred and twenty um, I'm going to change the format on that because it's supposed to be in money and it's not so I went over to format and then I clicked on cell format and that'll be up in a second and I'm going to change that to, to currency so you see the two and I have a symbol for US dollar and I say okay so I got paid 120 for these two text lessons <clears throat> but um, unfortunately I, I had actually spent 29 hours on them and that worked out to four dollars and fourteen cents an hour which was a revelation it basically told me that this is a job that I didn't want to keep so then I'm going to show you um, let me show you a more detailed job this job here is psychology handbook this was a, a fairly big job the biggest job I've done so far and it was a job that I had to um, bid on and kind of give them an idea of how much time I thought it was going to take me to complete the job. So I knew it was going to be 38 chapters for um, editing, proof, proofing, and reference checking. And I thought about it and I thought, well, okay, I'm going to bid 50 hours. I'm going to say that it's going to take me 50 hours to finish this job. So I kept track. Every day that I would come in, I would um, put in the date and the time that I started and add up how much time it was. I actually got paid ahead of time. My rate for this job was $20 an hour and my rates change depending on who I'm working for. And then I owed the person 50 hours. So as I worked on this over time and we got down to 38, it turned out that I had underestimated the amount of time that it was going to take me to do this job. I actually almost hit 57 hours and that was because we had a deadline looming and um, I was going really quickly at the end. So the next time I get a, a 35 to 40 chapter job, I'm going to bid 65 to 70 hours, I think, so that I have the right amount of time to really spend um, some time on the actual chapter materials and, and take my time going through them. I also learned from this spreadsheet that there were some chapters that were more difficult than others, so that's going to be a question that I'll ask the next time that I'm bidding on a job like this. These two chapters, um, chapter 4 and chapter 9, chapter 11 required a lot of editing especially chapter 4 which was written by somebody who wasn't a native uh, speaker of English so that's a question that I'll ask now the other thing that I'm trying to do with this time management spreadsheet is to kind of balance my time because I don't work 9 to 5 Monday through Friday um, I've always had a habit of just kind of working at a task until I get it done and spreading things out over a day so that I don't have to do the same thing all day long <clears throat> 
and I wanted to work I'm I am used to working about a 60 hour work day that's what I was or a 60 hour work week that's what I was doing when I was working full time so I thought well what I want to do is I want to divide up that 60 hour work week between these three things between things that I'm working on that are personal like <clears throat> my Spanish class that I'm taking in Second Life and research that I'm writing and um, Luminosity which I do every morning and that's a kind of a brain training um, website it's a lot of fun that's my personal stuff and my volunteer work I wanted to spend a particular time on the volunteer work you can see at the top this is the International Society for Technology and Education and I work on the social committee that's um, it, the social committee for the virtual world second life and I also do pro bono facilitation on modal training courses for integrating technology for active lifelong learners and that's at www.integrating-technology.org we're doing a Moodle MOOC on WizIQ right now um, so June has been a very big month for that and that's why I have so many hours there I'm actually a little bit behind on that course so down here at the bottom below these totals where I'm looking at totals and <clears throat> the number of hours and the average amount that I get paid for the things that I do for salary I also have this little area that that all along in here which allows me to kind of keep track of how I'm using my days and if I'm hitting my goals so since I want to do a 60 hour work week over a, fi a, a, a five day week but I know that I tend to work almost every day a little bit I took 60 hours and divided by 7 for a full 7 day work week and came up with 8.6 and I split that 8.6 between work for pay volunteer work and personal stuff another reason why I did this personal stuff is that I wanted to make sure I was paying attention to how much time I was spending on emails and social media and surveys and you can see it's quite a lot so that way I can see where my problem areas are if I'm overdoing something so here you I have a, an average and the way we got that you can see up here that the formula is B22 divided by B27 B22 is the total number of hours for paid work since the beginning of May and B27 is the total number of days and the way I keep this going is whenever I get started on a work day I go in onto the month and I add the new date in so today's the 20th so I changed June from 19 to 20 and then I always have that total number of days that have elapsed since I started keeping this time management spreadsheet so then I divide the number of hours worked by the number of days that have lapsed and then I get my average and I'm shooting for an average of five hours and five uh, five and a half hours uh, spread out over seven days in actuality I usually have one or two days off in the middle of the week so it's it's more like um, that I'm really working a five-day week but this gives me a way to take a look at it and you can see that I'm sloughing off a little bit I need to pump up the pace because I'm about an hour and a little bit more than a half um, underneath my goal for the pro bono I was hoping to do about a half half hour a day on my volunteer work and I'm a, I'm a little bit over that um, uh, no I was yeah I was trying to do a little a little more than a half hour a day and I'm a little bit under that so I, I'm just not too much under it so that's something that's pretty much on target when I look over here I had anticipated spending about two and a half hours per day on um, all of these personal things and I'm actually running high on that and I'm running high on that because of social media and email so this is something I have to learn to deal with in a more efficient fashion so this is um, this time management spreadsheet that I put together I think it's very useful it looks a little weird because it looks like it's a lot of work initially but when I first set it up I just did the templates here I did um, the template for the stuff that didn't require pay with just date job start end and total I did the template for things that had um, the two or three jobs that I had at the time already that I was getting paid for and set those templates up slightly differently so that I would also have that spot that had th the amount of money that I was making and um, more description and the and a place for the rate 
as I finished jobs, I would just put Z in front of it and, and just yank it down to the end. I had only maybe two or three jobs going when I first started the spreadsheet, so I, all these tabs kind of got developed as I started to think of something I wanted to keep track of, and that's really easy in Excel. You just click here, and it comes up Sheet 1, and then you name it, whatever you need to name it. I'm just going to say New Sheet. And one one tip is don't ever put spaces in between here because then when you go ahead and use this as part of that um, pointer that goes and pulls some information from these sheets, you you have a, um, a term that doesn't have any spaces in it. So for instance, here's that again. Psychology Handbook is all pushed together. That's the name of the tab. And then the exclamation point, the column, and the row and you pull up the piece of information that you need. So I hope this helps. Once I got it all set up, I found it to be really easy to use, and it's giving me a lot of information that I wouldn't otherwise have, and it's really easy to keep track of. So hope it helps. Thank you.